Day 268. Today there are a lot of developments along the entire front, so let's dive right into them. In the Kherson region, the Ukrainians are notably pushing the Russians on the eastern bank of the river. Yesterday, Ukrainian military sources posted footage of Ukrainian troops striking a Russian armored personnel carrier in Oleshki. The latest news suggests that the Ukrainians established control over the Kruhlik island. This island has plenty of ports and is located only 700 meters away from the shipyard, so it is quite likely that the Ukrainians are already there. The Russians are targeting these ports with their artillery, and today they notably struck the main port in Kherson. Some reports suggested that this is an attempt to reduce Ukrainian profit from the grain deal, however it is too early to use Kherson to export goods. As you can see, this is where they might have left some barges, and in order to complicate the construction of pontoon bridges, they probably struck this port. The Ukrainians are also continuing to strike Russian bases far behind the current front line. Ukrainian general staff reported that as a result of a HIMARS strike in Skadovsk, up to 50 Russian soldiers were killed and many more wounded. The general staff also confirmed that the explosions in Chaplinka and Kalinchak, that we discussed several days ago, were indeed due to the destruction of Russian ammunition depots. Overall, the southwestern part of the Kherson region slowly becomes more and more untenable. The difficulties of supplying this group are extreme, because as discussed previously, there is a huge national park, which means that there are very few roads, which in many cases are exposed to direct Ukrainian fire. So Russian trucks have to travel up to 150 kilometers, possibly to get destroyed on the road. That is why they are slowly moving closer to the Zaporizhia region. And in the Zaporizhia region, there are no further updates regarding the Russian offensive operation towards Hulepole. It is not unlikely that the Russians would try something substantial, as they must have already relocated a lot of troops here from Kherson. What also signals that the Russians may be serious about this direction is the fact that they started targeting Ukrainian railway stations. Today explosions were reported at one railway station in Dnipro, one in Zaporizhia and one in Vilnyansk. What is common between these strikes is that they attacked only stations that are usually used to transport machinery from Kherson to Zaporizhia. This means that the goal here is to prevent the Ukrainians from reinforcing this part of the front line and possibly developing an offensive, while the Ukrainians here are still weak. In the meantime, the Ukrainians here are striking Russian ammunition depots. There are two artillery brigades, which exploit the fact that the Russians had to move here a lot of ammunition since the fall of Kherson. Over the last four days, the Ukrainians destroyed one ammunition depot near Dniprorudne, two near Melitopol, one near Tokmak, and one near Andriivka. When it comes to the second Russian offensive operation near Vuhledar, today Russian Ministry of Defense reported that they established total control over the road that connects Mikiliske and Pavlivka. This is a very dubious victory because I'm quite confident that they cannot use it. First of all, it is less than 3 kilometers away from Vuhledar, which means that Ukrainian tanks will demolish anything that moves through the field that, secondly, is in the lowlands. If we look at the topographic map, we can see that the road is around 30 meters below Ukrainian tanks. The only thing we can conclude from the reports of the Russian Ministry of Defense is that there has been no real progress here for quite a while. And everybody knows about Russian progress. That is why if we look at the surveys conducted by Russian Field, which is a Russia-based organization, we can see that the majority of population does not want this so-called operation to continue. The survey also shows that overall, people think that their standards of living have worsened, they expect them to worsen even more, and almost all people expect the next wave of mobilization. Interestingly, some sources started reporting about the beginning of general mobilization in December. Official sources are denying it, but they denied partial mobilization as well until suddenly it was announced. Although there are so many problems with partial mobilization, that I think that right now they will simply not be able to handle general mobilization. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description, 
Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.